Well, good morning everyone. Welcome back to the channel. I know it's been a minute, but we're here at Spring Nats uh, in Charlotte. You cannot tell by the way I'm dressed that it's spring because it is freaking cold and wet. So yesterday, no practice, just soaking rain. This morning, track still wet, no practice. So I'm gonna throw on new tires, go straight to qualify. What's gonna happen? Don't know. Your guess is as good as mine, but hopefully the transponder pick up. Hopefully I'm not dead last, and hopefully uh, I have a good run. So let's hope for the vets. Let's send it, and uh, hopefully uh, I don't make a fool of myself. Uh, it's only been my excuse, no excuse. Uh, it's been about three weeks since I got the neck procedure done. Uh, I'm feeling better, just super sore, but what can we do? And oh, by the way, when Mike and I were racing together, we would park out in the boonies, all right? Out there in the boonies. Joshua decided to start racing, and Mike decided to go get VIP. So literally, right when you come off the grid, Mike decided to go get finally a really good parking spot right next to the grid so all it took is his uh, kid to come out he's doing pretty good I hope I beat him that's, that's really the only goal thanks guys thanks for watching hit the subscribe button the notification bells all those buttons I truly appreciate it and uh, let's get after it today so here we are for qualifying this is the first sessions on the track yeah tons of laps on it but you really don't know how the track's going to be after a whole bunch of rain. Um, the motor was pulling really, really strong. So I decided to go the complete opposite of what I usually do and decided to go to a much lower gear than I usually run. Um, I usually run 353 three or somewhere around there. I was on a 350. Uh, I usually qualify a lot higher, like in a 5658. Five, I didn't do that this year. Why? I don't know. Uh, I honestly don't know. Uh, so I was a uh, three five zero, pretty low. Um, I knew I was low after I talked to uh, Casey, and he's like, "No, I was I was way higher." And then during the race, uh, I don't know what happened, but it was just catching people at the wrong spot, wrong time throughout the whole session. Um, I couldn't get a really good clean lap. Uh, there's Josh. A smoker having an issue because his dad touched the cart but you know how it is with him Mike gets a little crazy and uh something usually happens poor guy there but you know i, I had a pretty good run other than turn one a little traffic uh i was trying to gauge my time off of insco insco is right ahead of me um i'm sure if i would have gone up higher on gearing like i usually run maybe a, a five six or five eight uh i could get on a couple more tents out of it which would have made a big difference because two tents uh, what's the difference between P20th and P8 on the grid? So that's how tight uh, the competition is here. Uh, it ain't no joke. It's it's really stiff competition coming up. It's insane how close the uh, the midfield pack is. Um, I, I consider myself a midfielder, so the midfield pack is stupid close. Then you have a couple little bit quicker guys, are about two tenths clears of us, so. Um, sometimes it's the right draft. Sometimes it's just getting a good clean lap. Sometimes it's maybe uh, getting a little bit of extra practice in. But to be honest, with it wet and everything, I didn't think I was going to get any good extra practice in to begin with. This was a pretty clean, solid lap. Um, so I have no complaints, no excuses. Um, just was trying to get a little toe here at the end. Just maybe a little low on gearing. But in the end, P15 was not bad out of 40 something cards. Very, very happy with the result. Well, qualifying went well. I'm very shocked. Completely shocked. Super happy though, but shocked. Um, downright, it was pretty good. I mean, Bryce needs to clean up. He cleaned up a lot of his How was his time? He looked 48.5. So, what was that close to Mikey? Yeah, Mikey did too, but yeah, without the draft. Yeah, 48 yeah. Yeah. So, we just, yeah, we just saw. Yeah. This one we just uh, did the check and chuck. <laughs> I'm trying to do this radio. Quick. All right. P15 for me. 
the kids did great uh, qualifying wise. John did amazing P3. Right? Shout out. Did you end up at P3? P3? Oh, yeah, Where'd you end up? 15. First time on the track. In the drive. Yeah, I just got kind of catch up. Yeah, I was going to say that. So, uh, it'll be well. Congratulations to John, Mark Steele, uh, P1 again, show off. Um, and then Camp Chaos was up there as well. Uh, we're going to do a little quick debrief. <laughs> Sound like we know what we're doing. And then uh, I'm going to go do a gear change. And that's about it. And then send it. Not much to do, is just drive. Somebody should talk to me out of this gear change. I end up dropping to a 4.6. Why? I don't know why. Okay. I was just beating the limiter really well on uh, qualifying. And I blame the engine. All right, I blame uh, Maxim Motorsports and uh, Jamie MacArthur for all this issue I just came up with. Because usually, uh, I like to run the engine on the limiter a long time. Well, this motor is pulling hard, and I was on the limiter pretty good. So I was like, oh, well, then maybe I can drop a tooth and go even faster. Um, no, I, I couldn't drop a tooth and go faster. Uh, I, I ran off the track a little bit, so I got a little bit of dirt. Uh, on my tires and just went wide on this uh, sector right here uh, 45 got around me no issue and then it was just I was just off on gearing I should have stayed the same or maybe even gone up a tooth uh, to be honest I probably should have been on somewhere in the 5356 five, range um, I should have never been that low in the 46 I don't know what I was thinking all the other guys in heavy were running 53s and 50 so what was I thinking? I don't know. I blame the motor builder on this one. The chassis was running too good. I blame the chassis builder too. It's never the driver. Remember that. All right, guys? It's never me. Um, no, I was not on it either. I was losing the rear end, um, uh, entering the corner too. So I had to do adjustments as well. Car was a little too free. Right there, Casey moved me out of the way, as you can see. Uh, he just bumped me out of the way and then passed me. I don't think that was very clean of him and not very fair, to be honest. Even though he's the, uh, you know, the nice guy on track, dirty move. It's just, you know, so dirty. <laughs> oh no, he just got by me. I was just not doing well. And then the car comes alive. And then, um, of course, when it came alive, it was a lot later in the run. So probably maybe bump up on tire pressure. A couple of things I could have done differently for sure. Um, of course, I was going to shove it on the inside. Uh, you know, rough him up a little bit. But I, I like Casey, so I'm, I wasn't going to rough him up too much there. Uh, I made that move there, and uh, that cost me some uh, a position to uh, Tim. Um, Tim drove me really well. Uh, after a race, though, I told him that he drove me off track. It was really funny. He was moving. He came from the back to the front. Uh, the 808 and I had a really good battle as well. Uh, we were just, it was just motoring around. Uh, the cart felt really good uh, towards the end of the race. It felt way better. It had snugged up in the rear where I needed to snug up a little bit. And then after that, it was just cruising in the S's, man. The changes I made to this bad boy, she was a hot rod. Uh, it was just, look at that, all over the 808's rear end. But then the gearing didn't really make a difference. Like, I would just suck up after he would hit the limiter. I would suck up a little bit, but then I'd just lose the rear there, and then I just couldn't make it up again. So... Um, did the gearing make a difference? No, I thought I was going to gain a lot more in the top end speed, but you know, it has to be a combination of everything. Everything has to be, you know, working perfectly in harmony. Like right here, I, I can carry the gear at a corner because I get a good road through the corner, so I can put my nose on the inside and take the turn. But then after that, I know um, if I make one small mistake or the cart slips, slides, it's over. And it just takes that minor, minute, um, fine line to lose a tenth or two anywhere in the track. And then, yeah, I could see them. They hit the limiter. And then I gain, 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 gain. But in the tight section, they pull away so quickly. And, yeah, I just made a mistake. But other than that, cart was handling really well. Um, I was going to actually try something that I haven't tried before. Uh, you guys know I run Douglas's on the front and MXC's on the rear. <laughs> Uh, I was running pretty narrow uh, on a softer axle, th axle than I usually run, but I still needed uh, more rear grip. So the next section, I decide to bolt on some um, Douglas rears 
and basically run 50 and a half in the rear and bring in my front a little bit because I was running 49 uh, inches in the front. Now I bring in the front, I ran it at 48 inches and the cart next session was beautiful to include the gear change because I definitely need that damn gear change. But this session, I was uh, extremely happy where I finished. Um, too bad for me. I had uh, non-ethanol fuel in the cart before. Uh, I cleaned out the jug. I put in the 87 pump that I got from the gas station. We all use the same pump. All the kids passed tech. I did not pass tech. I got DQ'd for fuel. So, you know, shit happens. Got to start in the back. Well, heat one in the books. Racing was good. Um, should never drop the gear because that right there screwed me. So, should have just left the gear how it was. But no, I thought I could pull lower gear. And that's the opposite of me. You guys know I like to eat the limiter. This time, I didn't even know the, if the limiter existed or it got lost. But not good. Um, come off the scales, right side, get DQ'd because I'm too light. <laughs> so I go to the left scales, they gave that back, went to check for fuel. We're all using the same jug, but I'm guessing I had some leftover residue from the other ones and then I failed fuel. So it's not been a good day. So I don't know. I guess I'm starting in the back for the next round. Um, I'm going to have to work my way forward, so I'm going to add two teeth, so I'll be higher than everybody else, so, oh god, it's going to be a long weekend, it's only Saturday, well, the lights are on, let's see how cool it is the race at night, hopefully I can make up a lot of spots, because I'm starting to back. Alright, we got Mikey's point of view of heat two, uh, the lights are on, it is starting to get dim, so, you can still see there's plenty of light outside uh, to be racing, so it wasn't that big of a deal. He gets a really good start at the beginning. Um, uh, jumps up to fifth, I think. It was a really good start at the beginning. Jumps up to fifth. Um, he makes a couple good moves. Uh, I think he ends up, yeah, right on third spot. It was a really good start for him. Um, he really liked the cart. He was struggling with the same issue too as well. Um, Aiden got by him. Uh, and then try to work together to move on up. The biggest issue, or the pro <laughs> this is the biggest problem. Um, all the MGMs are really, really fast. All right, this is our biggest issue, dude. For some reason, when we get on track, when off track, we all love each other. When we get on track, we all hate each other. <laughs> we we are our own worst enemies. If we could actually line up like six MGMs together in a row and work together, I don't think anybody be able to catch them but um no there's no no love in between any of these guys at, at all i don't get it it was it's like uh, maybe there should be team orders but they've been like ferrari with fred and be like screw it just let them race if they kill each other they kill each other and 99.9% .9 of the time uh they end up breaking each other out or screwing each other over so i don't get it um, Mikey was just a little free in the rear as well. Uh, he was having the same issue as mine, so he was going to do the same thing um, coming up. Uh, put on some Douglases for the next heat race for tomorrow and see if that would help his uh, his problem. Uh, he decided not to do my mistake. Uh, he, he went out on a 5-3 uh, gear ratio, which was much better, but maybe should have gone 5-0 because Will and uh, Elmer passed him like he had a boat anchor tied. Um, Elmer was just so dang fast, man. That kid was literally half a second faster than the field. It was insane. And uh, he basically passed everybody like, like he ran down the leaders. Like, that's how fast he was. He was a good three to four tenths quicker a lap. Um, and then uh, Sean got back by uh, Mikey. So Mikey made up a lot of spots at the beginning and then started falling back. Uh, lap times really didn't change. He was just running good, consistent lap times, low 48s. Just the leaders were around 47.8. And then you had Mo 47.5. Um, his cart was just hooked up like a monster. And 
I don't even know what to say. That that thing was just just rolling. The kid had that thing hooked up great. So, but other than that, uh, Mikey lost a couple positions. There he is. Uh, Downs Bryce came by him as well. Uh, Bryce was really fast as well. Just had some bad luck here and there. Uh, junior rules real quick too. Uh, junior Downs, he ended up winning one of the heat races. So, I mean, all, they were all quick. All the MGMs were quick. It's just they just for some reason in the lighter classes when it becomes like light, medium, and heavy. All the younger kid categories, it's like when you find an MGM, just wreck them instead of help them. I don't know. That's that's all I'm gonna say in that subject. Uh, I just wish that we worked a little bit better together, uh, and that way it would be, you know, just overall better. Like if you're around an MGM or a teammate, because if I see someone the same manufacturer as me, I'll push them. Like the last race, uh, I found Perkins. And I just stayed on Perkins' back bumper the whole race pushing. Because to me, two carts are always faster than one. And he's on the MGM, so I'm just going to push him. I won't push anybody else unless I need help. So I'll push one of the other guys. Like Insko is another guy I'll push. I'll find someone to work with to get to the front. But if I'm around an MGM, I'd rather work with my own chassis brand than another chassis brand. Call me old school. Call me whatever. But I just think that's how it should be. Uh, overall, he had a good run. Just fell in touch from the lead pack. We just didn't have the overall pace that we needed uh, to stay up with them. He did a great job driving. Uh, it wasn't any of his driving. It was uh, just missing a little bit that we needed in the cart setup. So hopefully we were going to find it. But he had finished top 10 on a weekend so far. So good for him. Good run. Uh, excellent job on his part for sure. All right, here I did a couple of chassis changes. I was really smart on the start of the race. You can see it, uh, it is nighttime. It is way darker at night. Um, but it was trying to stay clean the whole time. All right, I wasn't trying to go too crazy and run bunches at the start. Um, I didn't wanna, you know, hit anybody and someone, you know, get upset. But other than that, the cart was really doing really good. Uh, I added a whole bunch of teeth. I added two teeth. So I will end up being on uh, 360. It might have been a little too high, but, you know, I was going to make my bed and lay in it too and <laughs> just wrap out the limiter. Uh, my goal was like I needed to get through the traffic. So I'm just going to drive as fast as I can in the infield and hopefully survive the straightaways, which... Um, to be honest, it worked out great. Uh, people were getting bunched up left and right. Um, I get slammed a little sideways. I don't think he saw me on the inside. So I decided to back out of it. Uh, I didn't want to, uh, you know, cause an accident. Uh, I was not too happy with uh, getting side potted the way I did. But, you know, uh, I relaxed. I knew I was in the back and it was my fault for putting myself there. So it was basically, you know, be smart make the passes when I need to make and that was it but the passes weren't going to happen down the straightaway I know that much <laughs> it was going to happen in the corner if I did some crazy moves like this so I'm back up to the uh, to the guy that uh, had a slight encounter with and I'm going to try to pass him again uh, he overshoots this corner I get a give him a little bump I get a better drive out I'm clearly up on the inside this time. He has to see me. Um, I was not going to back out of it. I made the move on the inside. Then the group spreads out uh, some. So it takes me a while to run uh, these next two down. Uh, they were having a good battle out. They just were hard charging the corner. So they would go into a corner really hard, wash out. And I just went right underneath both of them. Um, it was a good run. Um, he got a really good exit on that one. And then I'm just going to get a little bit better exit. His cart's just going to push a little wide. And here it's just all gearing. Um, I'm in his draft. And he's going to open up for the corner. I'm going to take the inside and just go for a double left. Now at this point in time, um, I do not think I'm going to catch the guy that you can't even see in the picture. Uh, he's way up there. So I'm just going to hit my marks, hit good consistent laps. And then the last two laps, I just really bear down and start getting on it and I start reeling him in a lot quicker than I expected so I'm thinking to myself 
maybe I should have just pushed it a little harder right after I got by uh, the other two. But overall, cart setup was on the money. I was not going to make any more changes cart-wise um, for the next day. I was just going to drop a, a, a gear just to be in that 5.3 and just leave it. Uh, super happy with everything else. I really didn't mess with the chassis at all. Just mess with a little bit of track width and uh, mostly gear changes. But other than that, overall, stupid happy with it. Uh, couldn't be more static, uh, elated with the chassis. Uh, thanks to MGM, Maxim Motorsports, Podium Products, Smoker Gears, um, CR Graphics. Everybody helps me out. I couldn't thank you guys enough.